The Pavespa fell almost 1% on the day after Brazil was knocked out of the last World Cup. Alex Edmonds is a professor of finance at the London School of Business. He joins me now. Good to see you, sir. Thanks Thank for having you for coming on, in. Now, your fundamental theory is when a market, when a country is kicked out, the market falls. Yes, that's correct. And that's because of the large effect a loss has on investor mood. So we know that sports results affect your emotions, but the magnitude of these effects can be pretty large. So when England got knocked out of the 1998 World Cup, on penalties, of course, heart attacks shot up over the next few days. And this is not just an English thing. So suicides go up in Canada when the Montreal Canadiens are knocked out of the Stanley Cup of Ice. Oh, Ice-Hockey. come on. Well, how? Why? Because of the, just the large effect it has on people's mood. And notice that this doesn't just affect your mood about your feelings about your team, but this spills over into general life. So it can lead to general economic pessimism. Now, I, I agree. If you decide to commit suicide as a result of this, that's pretty irrevocable. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, um, other actions may be too. But what is the... Does the market recover? The market recovers a little bit. So what we looked at was the day afterwards. It will bounce back by half the initial decline. So the initial decline is half a percent. So you might think that's not a large amount, but apply to the UK stock market, that's £10 billion. Let's talk about the UK stock market. This is the FTSE 100 in the week after England uh, got, were knocked out of the last World Cup in 2010. They were beaten by four goals to one in, by Germany on the Sunday. Shares fell almost 5% in the following week. Now, we don't know, we haven't gone detailed to see what are the factors, but you would say that 5% fall, quite a part of it would be related to the cup. That's correct. So what we do is we control for everything else that might drive stock returns. So what's happening in the general world and so forth. And what we can attribute to, to the football loss is about half a percent. And what comes back and how quickly? So about half of that will come back on the next that's day. That's a quarter percent. That's a quarter percent. And then from day three onwards, we find it's pretty flat. So actually, some of the decline is, is permanent. So while there's a modest bounce back, still about a quarter percent go, goes down, which is permanent. Extraordinary. And it's all because of the feeling. Yeah, so this is why we, we studied 1,100 games. We looked at 39 countries. And so with a lot of data, we found the event was pretty, pretty robust. And it's strong... So we'll know... So as soon as a country gets knocked out of this World Cup, we're going to put your test... Your theory well, the it's not going to happen for every <laughs> single occasion. So this will happen on average. And also, this is controlling for everything else right. that might drive stock returns. But on average, if, if there's a loss, just hold on to your, your purses because the market's going to go down. Now, before the World Cup began, economist Alex Edmonds told me losses on the pitch correlate to losses for a nation's economy. Time to see if his theory is holding good. In the Battle of the Titans, England lost to Italy, getting their World Cup off to a dismal start. The next trading day, the stock market in London lost half a percent, give or take. In one of the most unexpected losses so far, the reigning champion Spain thrashed by the Netherlands. The next day... Spanish market down 1%. And what happened after Italy were beaten by tiny Costa Rica? The Milan market fell 1%, 1.5% on the next day. So, Professor Edmonds is joining us back. Professor. Hi, Richard. It's good to be back. Now, I haven't looked at this as closely as you have. But if your numbers are right, your theory holds good. If a country loses in the World Cup the stock market falls. That's right, Richard. We've seen that on average. So out of the 27 countries which have lost where there's been a major stock market, we've seen in 17 out of those 27 instances, the market has fallen the next day faster than the world market. So it has happened most of the time. Right, but I guess what I'm asking you now is, is one related to the other or is it a happy coincidence or unhappy coincidence. Are you able to say that correlation exists or it's just happenstance? So on one particular occasion, you're right, it could be that other factors are driving the stock market. For example, when Nigeria lost to Argentina, the market fell by 0.6% the next day. Now, I'm not going to claim that that's because of the, the soccer result, because there was also terrorism in Nigeria, and also the loss wasn't particularly painful. Nigeria had already qualified. But that's why we want to look at lots of data. So the original study, we looked at 1,100 soccer games, and indeed, so far in the World Cup, we've looked at 27 soccer games. And so while in any particular instance, there might be something else going on, on average, we do you find the theory holding up? Right, you find so as that as we go from the group stage into the quarterfinals or the group of sixteen and then the quarterfinals, does that accelerate? Does it get? Does it? Or would you expect it to continue? 
Yeah, it should get stronger. So the original study f found that the market falls by 0.4% for any loss in the World Cup, but it goes down by 0.5% um, by a loss which leads to elimination. So oh, no. we should find this going stronger. You must be watching this very, very so closely. I mean, like today's matches, you know, you must be watching very closely to see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, so because we saw the losses over the weekend, so the markets haven't completely closed yet, but the Chilean market, when I last checked, that was down by 0.6%, even though the world market is slightly up by 0.2%. Right. So we'll see where it closes today, but that is still consistent. Professor, can you tell me why this happens? You're starting to advance a very strong argument that it does happen, but now tell me yep. why. Well, this is because of the negative effect that soccer results have on investor mood. So the traditional view is what drives the stock market. It's fundamentals like dividends and profits and unemployment. But this shows that the market is, is driven by emotions. So uh, traders are human beings who have feelings, uh, contrary to popular, uh, popular belief. So you might wonder what possessed me to write this crazy study on the effect of, of soccer on the stock market. Is this serious research? And I, I believe it is. So that the bigger question is not whether soccer drives the stock market, but whether it's emotions versus fundamentals that drive the stock market. And the evidence so far in the World Cup is that indeed emotions have a large part to play. And we will hopefully talk to you again before this World Cup is over. Professor, great to have you on the programme. Thank you very much indeed. Alex Edmonds is a professor of finance at LBS in London. He has been leading us and guiding us throughout on this. His theory is fundamental. It basically says if you, when you get booted out the contest, your stock market goes down the next day. You're still holding up to that theory, Alex. Yes, I am, Richard. It's good to be back. So we've seen out of the 38 times where a country with a developed stock market has lost a game, in 25 out of those 38 times, the market has fallen faster than the world market. Right. So when the Netherlands got knocked out, the market fell by 1.7% the next day, even though the world market was only down by 0.7%. I'm going to show you that. Here's the Netherlands. And there we have... Oh, look at that. Wow. Netherlands loses to Argentina and the market, you rightly point out, falls. And, Alex, it doesn't recover, does it? So when, when we did our study, we found that on average, maybe about half of the initial decline would recover on the next day. But that's just on average. So sometimes it may not recover. Sometimes it might fully bounce back. But on average, not all of it recovers afterwards. So we do find right. a permanent decrease because of the effect of investor mood. You have a problem with your theory, and the one that everybody wants us to talk about, of course, is Brazil. When the 7-1 yeah. catastrophic disaster happened. Well, let's, before you answer, give me the end. And, here is the map, or the graph. There is the loss. Brazil won, Germany 7. But, Alex, the market went up. The market was closed the day after because of a holiday. But the market went up and it has continued to go up. Doesn't this blow a hole in your theory? You might think so. You might think I'm a masochist for being willing to appear on your programme again rather than hanging my head in shame. Uh, but actually, there was a logical explanation. So you're right, the defeat was bad. It was, in fact, so bad that it severely damages the president, Dilma Rousseff's chances of winning re-election. And because she's presided over a long period of stagflation, and also because the opposition party is pro-business, actually, if she doesn't get re-elected, the markets will go up. And that's why we saw the rise after the defeat on Tuesday. So you've got to look behind the numbers sometimes, and they're behind the loss. Are you satisfied, finally, briefly, Alex, are you satisfied that your theory has held true in this World Cup? Yes, I am, because while well, on any particular event you, day you might have some other events, so the fact that this president might, may not be re-elected, that's why you want to look on average. So we wanted to look at all the 38 losses that we had so far, and as I mentioned, 25 out of the 38, including some of the major losses, such as Italy losing to Costa Rica, such as Spain losing to the Netherlands, such as the Netherlands going out. And in all of those times, we have seen the market decline. Only the Brazil result is an anomaly, but there, there is actually a, a good explanation of that. Her platform 
right. was very tied to soccer. She had spent a lot of money on soccer stadiums, which she'd previously promised to spend on hospitals and schools. And that's why, in her case, a big soccer defeat is so damaging for her re-election prospects. Uh, Professor, it's been marvellous having you on the programme. Thank you. A very different... Next time, in four years' time, hopefully you will have predicted who's going to lose and we can all invest before the match even happens. Thank you, sir. See you again in four years. Looking in forward. In four years. <laughs>